Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of TK's Guitar History, Episode 2. I'm Richard Wilson, and this is Mr. TK, hey. Tom Keckler. And uh, we today we wanted to talk about um, TK and, excuse me, and yeah. his partner and business associate, Mr. Mike Ladd. There he is. And their involvement with Gibson in the late 60s and the reintroduction of the 1950s uh, Les Paul. So uh, you were telling me that that Mike Ladd went to military school with uh, with Dwayne Allman. And Greg. And Greg Allman. Yeah, it was a school in Kentucky, Castle Heights Military School. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that they and Mike were both sent there by their parents. Um, well, you know, usually if you get sent to military school by your parents, it's because you're a bad boy. Oh. So <laughs> anyway, they just happened to be in there at the same time. And uh, at the time, uh, Greg, uh, Dwayne, was, they were into the uh, surfing music. <laughs> and, you know, late 50s or 60s. Late 60s, I guess, or early 60s, I don't know. Mm. But anyway, that, that's the kind of music they were into. And then here comes Mike, and he's a blues guy from Memphis, mm -hmm. a white man that can play the blues. Mm -hmm. And uh, that struck uh, Dwayne um, pretty hard. He was very interested in that type of uh, guitar playing. Okay. And uh, so they kind of traded out. You know, I had to trade out. Mike was not interested in surfing music. Right. But he, he certainly taught, taught him, taught Greg a lot of blues licks and things. And uh, that's how they, they became close friends. And of course, eventually they were either thrown out of Castle Heights or they quit. <laughs> right, right. So, so basically, um, that, that was probably led uh, Greg and Dwayne to be looking at the late 50s Les Paul yeah uh, you know for for blues uh you, you know that's the favorite guitar and obviously by that time it'd been discontinued and it morphed into the SG style Les, Les Paul that that right. you know. discontinued in, in 60 yeah was the last standard Les Paul made right and uh, of course there were no CNC machines back then and so it was uh, wrapped up into a, a blueprint stuck yeah. back somewhere you know and uh and obviously the music was changing because in 66 you had uh, Clapton playing with John Mayle and the Blues Breakers and obviously mm -hmm. he favored the the late 50s hey. Les Paul and obviously uh Jeff Beck who yeah. you had met and obviously Jeff Beck group Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Green in England, again, the more heavy blues sound, and obviously Jimmy Page, which you were working with at that time. So basically, to bring things full circle, in like 67 or 68? Uh, somewhere in the late 67, I think it was, that yeah. we... Uh... You, you, yourself and your partner, Mike, you yeah. actually uh, had discussions with, with, with uh, Gibson. Right, the uh, president of Gibson at the time was a gentleman by the name of Wilbur Marker. Uh, you know, probably not as old as I am actually at the time, mm -hmm. but, but too old to understand what was going on uh, in, in the world of, of, of rock, blues, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, so, and they were just about to go under financially at that time, Gibson, the original Gibson. And so, uh, we uh, made friends. We would go up to Kalamazoo maybe once or twice a year mm. and just ravage the, <laughs> ravage the factory. <laughs> and anything that we saw that was like half done or, you know, sort of, and Wilbur would say, hey, take it home with you, you know. It'll probably never get finished, you know. Right. And uh, we said, well, you know, what we'd really like to talk to you about is the possibility of getting uh, Les Paul Standard reissued, or at least for us, Mike and me. <laughs> wow, that, that's incredible. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, he was he was not a, against that, but he wanted he wanted to make a deal. And he had a whole room full of the most beautiful jazz guitars. You, you couldn't believe it. It was like a, a art museum of some kind. L5s and Super 400s. And mm -hmm. They even had a, I've never seen another one. It was called a Crest. Yep. And it was all rosewood. 
Mm. The, the, the body, it was like a 335 type construction. The, the, everything was rosewood, neck, body, everything. <laughs> so, so, so was the deal, was, was that you guys had to commit to purchasing right. all these arch tops if Gibson would do a special run right. of the original 50s Les Paul. That's exactly right. And of course, Mike, Mike was Mike's father's money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And, uh, and Mike loved those kind of guitars. Anyway, nobody else loved them. I mean, yeah. They couldn't give them away. Or, you know, it was like art. Yeah. And, but Mike said, you know, uh, yeah. well, Mr. Marker, uh, he used to, well, if, if you would take this room full of guitars, you know, uh, to your store, I mean, yeah, you know, buy them, and I'll drag out the blueprints to the standard uh, Les Paul, and we will just for you. Uh, we'll do, I think it was maybe nine or ten, something like that. Uh, you know, and of course it was all done, you know, uh, you know with pin routers and uh, yeah. shapers and things like that. Just what it had always been done. Yeah. And, uh, and we said, fine, perfect, you know. And so eventually, you know, we got the first couple of ones mm -hmm. from uh, Gibson. And some of them had finishes on them, some of them didn't. <laughs> some of them had this, and some of them didn't have that. But we actually, you know, it didn't make us angry. It actually gave us a chance to um, do our thing, you know, uh, the kind of pickups that Mike yeah. would come up with. His, his pickups were so hot that <laughs> they had so many windings on them that you couldn't get the, the can, the cover on, okay. on, on, on it. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to show the audience what we're talking about. And there's a picture of uh, Jeff Beck there playing a, uh, this is a 54 Oxblood Les Paul that uh, TK also had an involvement uh, with. And we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so just, just to round off the discussion about Gibson. So basically they reintroduced the run of the 50s Les Pauls for you. And then obviously they went ahead and continued producing. To yeah. The, pick up in the market. Yeah, well, when it came, we, they were gone before they got here. It's just to local people. Wow. Mike grabbed one or two, you know, I got one, and then uh, the word spread so fast in town, you wow. know, uh, local players, they were gone in two days. So we immediately got on the phone with Mr. Marker. He yeah. said, hey, you know, that was a good, nice deal. Could we do that again? Wow. <laughs> and so... <laughs> That's you know, guitar said, legendary history, for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I mean, that, you know, that, 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 that was, God, look how much money uh, they, Gibson has made yeah. since 67 or 68. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Mike talked him into producing yeah. the standard. And let's not, once again, Mike Ladd is really <laughs> key to TK's guitar history, you really? know, for actually being able to make this happen uh, as well with that initial run, and that uh, truly is. And yeah. another one of those situations where the, the guy that invented the vice grips, uh, you know, he, he didn't get any of the money. <laughs> That's the way it goes, isn't it? No dough, no go. You That's know? Right. <laughs> well, the, talking about Les Pauls, yeah. um, I showed that picture a little while ago. Now, this is Jeff Beck playing a uh, 54 Oxblood Les Paul. And uh, TK was involved in that story. Yeah, um, it was a, a trashed uh, Les Paul. Okay. And, uh, I don't know, gosh, I think somebody set it on fire or something, and, you know. And uh, <laughs> so so we, we rebuilt it, yeah. I rebuilt it. Yeah. And uh, when it came to the paint job, I was I was striving for a uh, kind of a brown mm. tint. And it turned out, turned out to be, I guess, in most people's view, that's, it's like ox blood. I mean, well, you know, I was trying to make it brown. But, yeah. You know, and then about that time, uh, Jeff was in town, and uh, so this was in 1971 because mm -hmm. he was going to be recording the Orange album. The Orange album with Steve, TMI. Yeah. And, yeah, with Steve Cropper producing. Uh huh. Well, and, and T Steve owned that studio, okay. and he produced uh, that okay. album. And uh, so Jeff came into the store, and I guess would that have been strings and things? Yeah, that would have been strings and things. And so Jeff checked out the guitar, liked it, bought it, and uh, and then that uh, guitar obviously ended up 
on the blow by blow right uh, um album cover that that everyone knows yeah he, uh, yeah, he used it well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it originally had p90s but it, you'd had uh you put humbuckers full size humbuckers full size and humbuckers. i'm sure they were with patent applied for or something back then you know you could they were a dime and a dozen they weren't wow. Two thousand dollars a coil, or anything. <laughs> and uh, was the neck broken as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Headstock was broken. Uh, I'm trying to recall. It was, it was trash. It was almost it was a trash Les Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, this this is just incredible uh, um, history, and you think the history that guitar went on to to make. And ironically, a few years ago, Gibson Custom Shop did a did a special run mm -hmm. of those. You know, uh, infamous 50, guitars, fifty-four Les Pauls. You know, so some amazing history here. So that's that's the uh, the Les Paul history, which is quite incredible. Uh, I think that you had a part in the reintroduction of well, the yeah. Les Paul. Well, we certainly worked at it, and yeah. and, and cheated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going to the factory, you know, picking up pieces of of uh, projects that the guys in the, in the Gibson mm. shop would start off or something you know and yeah to give up on it or whatever we take them home and, and as a matter of fact jimmy page bought a uh hmm what was it, it was a uh a firebird uh, oh, sort wow. of a firebird a half of a firebird okay <laughs> and so we, we brought the body and the neck yeah, you know yeah. and, and glued the neck on and, and we painted it uh white mm. one of the local artists in memphis did a um, a job of you know hand painting yeah uh, the guitar piece of art I guess you could say yeah. and uh, uh, Jimmy bought that along with him buying a uh, uh, he actually bought Mike's personal Les Paul that he the one he had one of the first ones he had gotten which wow. was a uh, purple Les Paul mm -hmm. we made it purple mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was a beautiful guitar, and eventually Steve Cropper got a hold of that guitar, and and he also had that in the studio when uh, Jeff was recording, and uh, and he used it some, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jeff, he, Jeff Jeff used it. Yeah, and the wow. uh, and the and not the blow by blow, but the uh, orange, yeah the orange out orange out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Jeff Beck group. Mm -hmm. that, well, that, that's just incredible because obviously you had the connections with, you know, basically all three yeah. of the Yardbirds guitarists. Absolutely. Because at a later date, <laughs> it would be Eric Clapton, but that's for another episode mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, also um, a connection with Elvis as oh, well. God. That's going to be in another uh, episode as well. But for right now, TK, fascinating history. Yeah. Thank you for telling your story. Well, thank you for asking. You got it. <laughs> and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember to um, subscribe to the uh, to, to the channel and, and like the video. And uh, until next time for episode three, you take care. Bye-bye.